Yasyat Gyanaji Mahansala Sun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Kurvena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Sitarine Vanchakalpa through this chakri pasindu paye bachapatitanam pavane bio Vaishnave bio namaho namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Yananda Sri Advaita Gadada Narsi Pas Vigor Vakavrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare mm. So, tomorrow officially begins the month of Kartik. Uh, of course, around the world we have a different calendars, but um, for the United States, it's tomorrow, at least where I am. And uh, for other places, it might be today, I'm not sure. And tomorrow will begin for the entire month starting tomorrow a series of talks on Krishna's Leelas from Sri Vrindavan Dham and then leading up all the way to the Damodar Leela. <clears throat> but today we'll, we'll give a little prelude to the importance of this month, the auspiciousness of this month, uh, the, beneficial, the beneficial, beneficial, benefits of following this particular month, um, and that's what we'll cover today in a more of a synopsis presentation. So, um, of course, uh, we always say the best month of all year, Krishna say, says the best month of all year is actually Kartik. And that is true, but there is a better month or more powerful spiritual month, and that is Purushosh and Mas, which doesn't come up every year, that comes up every 27 months. And I think the next time it's due is sometime next year. I'm not sure when, but um, from a month, from a year to year basis, this month is the most glorious. It has many uh, decorations of that glory coming from different angles. One of them, it's non different than Srimati Radharani. This is Radharani's month. Uh, Kartik is Radharani's month. And uh, the next month following this month is called Magashirsha. Magashirsha is the month where it's uh, designated as Krishna's month. It's the harvest season in India, and it's the month of Krishna. Um, so we'll speak a little bit about this month. It's also a very wonderful and amazing and quite unique pastime of the Lord, where the Lord apparently, and it's very much apparent in this Leela, is forced to act against his own will. <laughs> and now, the one it has a certain contrariety to it that is amazing because we know that the supreme personality of godhead his will is always supreme his will is never thwarted but in this particular case especially yeah he defies what is being done to him but still he cannot resist his defying mood is subservient to what is coming upon him. And that is the love of, of Mother Yasoda. Mother Yasoda's love is so strong that it defies his own will to express his own nature as a child. 
And um, when you think about that in relationship to Krishna's position, it's extraordinary. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. But this is bhakti at its best. <laughs> so actually, the real hero of this particular pastime, or the real person who was glorified in this pastime, is Mother Yasoda. <laughs> Because that love is so strong that it binds Krishna, even though he doesn't want to get bound up, even though he does everything to escape, even though when he does escape by his, uh, by his godlike nature, he does escape, still he sub he's submissive to the love of his mother. Um, of course, you'll see that in other pastimes of Krishna, but nothing like this particular pastime. <laughs> nothing like this particular pastime. It, it's unique. And so this month is glorifiable. And uh, in this month, we see this month is considered the best of all months. Um, it says that great souls look forward to leaving their body in this month, great souls, those who are great in, in knowledge or in intelligence, look forward to disappearing from the world in this particular month. It's very auspicious. One gets greater amounts of mercy in their destination uh, after leaving the body. And it's a month where many, many great personalities appeared Many wonderful festivals are uh, organized and executed. It's a month where there is a lot of joy. <laughs> the most joyful of all of the festivals in this month is the Govardhan Puja, uh, where Krishna and his role as Giridhari lifts the Govardhan hill and gives protection to his devotees for seven full days against the protection of the arrogant and angry Indra who has lost his intelligence and doesn't know what he's doing. And Krishna is uh, protecting his devotees. Uh, we'll speak about that in detail, not just one class, but in hopefully in a few classes on that particular leader because it's so deep and transcendental knowledge and along with wonderful, wonderful exchanges between Krishna and his intimate associates in Sri Vrindavan Dham. By hearing about and trying to understand deeper what is Krishna's relationship with his devotees in Vrindavan, we enter into the mood of Vrindavan because that mood is unique, it is full of bhakti, it is free from anything material, and it is deep in transcendental love. Okay, I'll just uh, delineate some of the, uh, or narrate some of the uh, uh, important days in this month maybe speak a little bit about some of them. Tomorrow is a series of glorifications of great personalities. Saradiya Rasa Yatra, uh, when Krishna performed Rasa dance. He did it twice. He did it at the beginning of this month. And then you see it also at the very last day of the month. Also, there is also Rasa Yatra. That one, the last day of the month, is actually the one that is giving the most attention. That's on the, um, yeah, and that is on the uh, eight, 18th or 19th. And it's also the Krishna Rasayatra there also. But this is my first one is Saradiya Rasayatra. Um, Tomorrow is also the disappearance of Murari Gupta, one of the intimate associates of Lord Chaitanya, who was in the mood of Ramlila. Although he was a Rambakta, 
And he was actually an incarnation of Sri Hanumanji, who appeared in uh, Lord Chaitanya's pastimes to assist the Lord in these pastimes. Um, he had a completely different uh, uh, mood. He was in more Aishwarya Bhav. He was in the mood of uh, uh, Vaikuntha rather than Vrindavan. We know Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Vrindavan personified. But still, the Lord included a lot of his associates who were in different levels of spiritual uh, moods. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is also Lakshmi Puja. Mm -hmm. And um, in that Lakshmi Puja, it's not, uh, it is the Maha Lakshmi, actually. Not just Lakshmi, there are, Lakshmi expands herself into different forms of herself. And this is Maha Lakshmi, and she is the principal Lakshmi. Those of you who have been to a place in India called Satara, Satara, there is a temple there of Maha Lakshmi. And it's not actually a temple, it's actually a temple within a compound. And within that compound, there are many smaller temples of Sitaram, Lakshman, Hanuman, the sister. Lakshmi also Godavari, I think her name is, uh, and a few other places of worship all around there. It's a place where devotees go and spend the whole day. <laughs> and uh, it's a beautiful festival that ha happens every uh, year at the end of January. It's always at the last couple of days in January, the month of January. Uh, Mahalakshmi sits in the middle of her mandir, and the mandir covers her completely. Um, and there's hallways coming in from four sides that lead ultimately to her, who she is in the center. And in the midst of the temple, there are many um, uh, avenues or many, many walkways leading to different deities and devotees at uh, different deities. But the main entrance is coming from the east side. And uh, a very special event happens during those last three days of January. Sometimes it's January 31st, February 1st and 2nd. Sometimes it's January 29, 30 and 31st. It's in that time period where... Um, the husband of Lakshmi comes to visit his wife, and that is Lord Narayan. Narayan comes to see Lakshmi Devi for these three days, and you can see it. I was there, and I can give you the exact testimony. The first day of this appearance of Lord Narayan is the sun cannot go inside of that mandir. But on this particular day, it does. <laughs> and it appears at a certain angle and the light of the sun goes right into the mandir and hits the lotus feet of his wife, Lakshmi Devi. And that for, for a brief period during that day, the sun stays there. The following day, as the sun reappears in the sky in the morning, it goes from her feet to her waist and the middle part of her body. And then Darsh he takes darshan of her middle section because we also say Surya Narayan. Uh, the sun god is actually Vivashwan, but the actual sun is an expansion of Lord Sri Krishna in his form as Narayan. He's called Surya Narayan. So it's not different than Krishna himself in the form of Narayan. And the third day, and this is the day everyone is really excited about, there's thousands and tens and thousands of people who come, newspaper reporters, and it's just quite enthusiastic the sun goes and shines on her face mm -hmm. the last day. For three days, he appears to her feet, her midsection, and then her waist, and, the, uh, and then her face, 
And then after that, he is gone. And son does not come back until the following year to perform the same worship or the same ceremony. So Narayan comes to see his wife for three days a year as she lives within the mandir. And she is very merciful. I was there one year for that ceremony. I was standing right at the opening where the sun was appearing. And it's amazing because how the sun angles itself on that day is different from when the sun angles itself normally. It only comes on that three places on her body on that day. And to do that, in order to get that light directed towards her, it comes from a different angle. And it's interesting. And so uh, I actually have newspaper reportings that I managed to secure showing this whole festival. It's quite interesting. Um, so that's in Satara, in the home of Mahalakshmi. And then, uh, of course, her husband stays in, uh, he is uh, Vantekeshwar, who stays in Tirupati. And uh, yearly, they once or twice a year, I believe, at a certain festival time, they send, they send a beautiful, beautiful sari from Tirupati to Lakshmi Devi, Mahalakshmi, in her temple. And that sari is like, a hundred thousand rupees. It's about a half a crore. And it's a beautiful, highly designed, very uh, ornamented silk sari that she receives a present from her husband twice a year. So that's, that's also very ceremonious. Well, that's in um, Sitara. So tomorrow also is Lakshmi Puja. And it's also the fourth day of Chaturmasya. And on that day, we uh, begin the fast for one month for Urdal. So Urdal has to be, uh, Srila Prabhupada did want us to follow Chaturmasya, unless you're actually ill and you cannot follow for that reason. But this is the fourth and final month. And Urdal we find is in uh, Papadams, and in Italy's, those of you who are from South India, uh, you have to somehow or other just stick to doses instead of Italy's for one month. <laughs> and of course, you can also do rasam and whatever else you like, but no, it, no Italy's and no, uh, no papadams for that one month and no urdal itself. But, so we follow that. And then the next festival, appears on the 25th of this month, and that's the disappearance of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. Narottam Das Thakur was a representative of Lord Chaitanya's mood of Kirtan after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared. Narottam Das Thakur was born one year after the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the year 1535 in a place called Ketari Gram. And he, he appeared at that time, and uh, he revolutionized the whole process of Kirtan, started his own style, which we see now is the Manipur style of Kirtan in the area of Manipur. Some people say that that's where he appeared in that area, but it's actually Kekjari Gram. Uh, his life, there's a beautiful book on his life called Narutam Vilas. Uh, my god sister, um, trying to think of her name. She's the wife of Hari Sari Prabhu. She wrote a beautiful book. Sitala, her name is Sitala. She wrote a beautiful narration of the original uh, Narottam Vilas, which was done by who uh, uh, was a Chakravarti Thakur. Um, can't remember his name. Uh, Chakravarti. Yeah, his name was Chakravarti. I can't remember his whole name. Um, but then the version that she has done is very easily understandable, readable, and it doesn't take away from the original version at all. 
In fact, from my experience and reading it, it kind of enhances it. Well, that's a nice book. You might take time to read The Life of Naratam Das Thakur is very deep in pure devotional service. And his, he is, he is, he is, uh, he is one of the manjaris in the spiritual world who serves Radha and Krishna by boiling milk for Radha and Krishna and serving milk to them at different times, especially in the evening. So that's on the 25th. On the 28th, we have the appearance of Radha Kund. And then we also have uh, Bahulastami. Now, there seems to be a change in that particular uh, festival. Uh, recently, the GBC, I think two years ago, said that actually a Radha Kund and Bahulastami is not at that date. It's actually in the month of April, in the month of Chitra, which is also a very holy month. But still, the calendars are giving that, and devotees still celebrate it at that particular time. And millions, literally millions of people go to Radha Kund on that day at 12 o'clock midnight and bathe in Radha Kund. In fact, there's so many people in the water, you can't see the water. <laughs> it's just, and Radha Kund is quite huge in size. So that's, that's auspicious to bathe at 12 o'clock midnight on the appearance of Radha Kund. Bahulastami indicates the time when Krishna killed the demon Aristasura and then personally established Shamakund. And then after that, Shimati Radharani established her own kund known as Radha Kund. So that's on the 28th of the month. And the 29th is uh, Birabhadra Prabhu's appearance day. Sometimes we say Birabhadra and sometimes we say Virabhadra. He is the son of Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda had two wives, Janavi Devi and Visuddha. With Janavi Devi, there was no issue, but with Visuddha, he had two children. One was Birabhadra, and the other one was Ganga Devi, a boy and a girl. And Birabhadra is an incarnation of Shirodakshai Vishnu. He is actually the supreme personality of Godhead, and his life uh, is around the same time as Naratam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, Shamananda. Pandit. He appeared around that same time, which was in the later part of the 1500s. And um, he was known for his, for his powerful Shakti. We don't hear him trying to accomplish, he didn't really leave any something, anything significant in his life. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to simply served the devotees in the mood of a Vaishnava, although he was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that his appearance day is on the 29th. On the 31st, we have Ramakadasi. That's the uh, next Akadasi on the 31st of this month. And then we, now we move into the secular month of uh of november and on thursday is of uh, november 4th is called amavasya amavasya is the dark moon and on that day is dipali and also there is worship of kali kali puja on that day also this is a time where many hindu families especially the ladies particularly the ladies Worship different deities such as Lakshmi, Ganesh, Surya, who else? Uh, uh, a whole list of various demigods. Of course, we don't recommend that. And I'll explain what Krishna did to somehow or other uh, dissuade people from worshiping these different demigods. 
and that is on the next day, that is called Govardhan Puja. Of course, Dipali is a very important day. On that day, we, we honor Sri Ram. Ram comes back from the forest. He's reunited with all his associates, his uh, wife, Sita Devi, Anuman's there, Sugriva's there, Vibhishan's there, and then he meets Bart, and then he comes back into the city, his mother, Koshaya, she's there. So it's a beautiful, heartwarming, wonderful festival. Uh, how people celebrate that in India is quite nice. People go from house to house carrying sweets. And then they go and they deliver sweets to another house. And then when they're there, people give them sweets. And then they go to another home and do the same thing. And so Dipali means light. So it's called the Festival of Lights. When Ram was coming back from the forest, in order to welcome him, the whole city burnt torches. So the city was completely effulgent in light, honoring the, the, re, the return of Sri Ramchandra after being in the forest for, was it 13 years? 14 years, 14 years. So that's a very wonderful festival. And usually our temples decorate their altars and the areas around the altar with lights, just a lot of lights to honor the, the reappearance of Sri Ram. Um, and that is uh, on the 4th. On the 5th, of course, is Govardhan Puja. And then there's also Go Puja and Go Krida. Both appear on that day. Uh, Go Puja, Govardhan Puja, we know. Krishna frustrated the attempt to enter to destroy Vrindavan and all its associates by protecting them in a very powerful way. He humbled the arrogant uh, king of heaven who uh, uh, severely repented for his offense. And it's a beautiful pastime, but it ends or begins or appears right during the time when all of the other demigod worshipers, uh, demigods who are being worshiped by people in general, Krishna says, simply worship me in the form of Govardhan. And you'll get all the benefits and more because he showed by that example that the demigods think they're great, but I am the Aham Adi Devanam, he says in the Bhagavad Gita, I'm the source of the demigods. The demigods are my servants, they are my ungas, they are my limbs by which they carry out my orders to manage the universal affairs. So there are 33 million demigods and 33 million demigoddesses. They're all Krihastas. <laughs> There's no brahmacharis. <laughs> and they all are uh, uh, serving the Lord in different ways by managing the universal affairs and arranging for the heavenly kingdom like that. So Krishna wants to make it clear that mm, those who worship the demigods, you should understand whatever they can give can come by way of worshiping me. I am the source of the demigods. Uh, the demigods are simply, uh, can carry out only the power that I, that I give them. So we find that that's very strong in Krishna, in uh, India, people worship devas. It's traditional within families especially in South India. Uh, and it still goes on. Uh, women, in order to give protection to their husbands, undergo severe vows and fast for many days just to give protection to the husbands. We don't dissuade people from worshiping in this way, but we, we can tell you that, that ultimately, that by simply by worshiping Sri Krishna, in his form of Giddy Dari, the, the lifter of the Govardhan hill, one is the worship is complete. 
because Krishna contains all the power of the demigods within him. And if he's pleased by our worship, and how do you worship Govardhan Puja? You hear about Krishna's pastimes and you perform the ceremony of Govardhan Puja by building a nice mountain of various types of foodstuffs. You establish Giridari on the top of the mountain and all around the mountain, you put the devotees and the, the cows and you circumambulate the mountain and you chant a beautiful, beautiful prayer. And um, on that day, I'll, uh, I'll play for you that particular pr prayer. It's in the form of a bhajan. It's very, very beautiful, very enthusiastically done. It's what the residents of Vrindavan did when they circumambulated Govardhan Hill. It's so nice that I'm always eager to, uh, yeah, thank you, Mohan Asani Radha. Krishna is the source of all energies. Yeah, he also says that in the Gita many times, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo. Matat sarvam papartante iti matav bhajante mam bhura bhava samanvitaha. If you have a million dollars, you have a thousand dollars. You have a thousand dollars, you don't have a million dollars. So what is there in the whole is also there in the part. Okay, so that is Govardhan Puja, and then there's also Go Puja. Gopastami, we also sometimes, no, that's coming up later. I think Gopastami and Gostastami, that's later in the month. Go puja. And also on that same day is the appearance of Rasikananda Prabhu, who was a disciple of Shamananda Pandit, very powerful Acharya, who uh, made the entire uh, country of Utkala, which is Orissa. He made them all Vaishnavas. <laughs> uh, and it's, there's a book that's been published within our society on the life of Rasikananda Prabhu. And then on the uh, following day is the disappearance of Vasu, Vasudev Ghosh. There were three brothers, Vasudev Ghosh, Govinda Ghosh, and Madhava Ghosh, they were three sisters, actually three different gopis who appeared in Krishna Leela but reappeared as three brothers in Gaur Leela as the Ghosh brothers and they were famous for Kirtan. When we sing the Gaur Arti sang, we also mention uh, Nara Hari Hari Kori Chamaradulaya Sanjaya Mukunda Vasu Gosh Hari Gaya. So you see in that Gor Arti and the Gosh brothers, their names are mentioned because they're singing the Kirtan during the Gor Arti. <laughs> Okay, so that is uh, on the 6th. On the 7th is a very important day for us devotees in the ISKCON society. It's not a day of celebration, but it's a day of deep remembrance of the greatest of all personalities to appear in this age of Kali Yuga to deliver the fallen souls all around the world, the disappearance of his divine grace, AC Bhaktivedanta. Swami Srila Prabhupada. And on that day, we'll, we'll simply focus on Srila Prabhupada for an extended period of time and talk about Srila Prabhupada's um, contribution to the world in this very dark age of Kali and what Srila Prabhupada has given and how we can take advantage of what he has given to actually attain the perfection of life, pure love of God. Uh, appearance and disappearance. Disappearance is more sad because it reminds us of the, the loss that we have been given after having been given a great gift. Srila Prabhupada's 
personal presence. Of course, it says, he reasons ill, say that Vaishnavs die when thou art living still in sound. The Vaishnavs die to live and in living, spread the holy name around. We go to four days later to the 11th and we're on Gopastami and Gostastami. Gopastami and Gostastami, one of them is the time when Krishna became five years old and now he no longer takes care of the calves, he takes care of the cows. So at the age of five, Krishna was promoted to a full cowherd boy and he took care of the cows from that time on. And that is Go, Gopastami. Gostastami is the worship of the cows on that day in the New Vrindavan community. Each year during this particular day, we would go out to the cow barn and uh, with various colors and dyes and decorations, we would decorate the cows, put uh, handprints and different colored dyes all around the cows, paint their horns and paint their hoofs a silver color and uh, offer garlands and nice foodstuffs to the cows. So that's on that day, the, the direct worship of the cows. That's also part of Govardhan Puja, of course. And on that day also is the disappearance of Vidadhar Das Goswami, a great personality during the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who challenged one of the most ferocious and mean spirited um, uh, Islamic rulers at the time and uh, pacified the man <laughs> through the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. We'll talk about Gadadhar Das because his, his pastime is quite uh, instructive. Also, Dhananjaya Pandit and Srinivasacharya on that same day of the 11th. Srinivasacharya is one of the greatest of all of the Acharyas. The Grihasta, during the time of Srila Naratam Das Thakur, Srinivasacharya Naratam Das Thakur, Shamananda Pandit. We're all close friends and they all preached together to spread Krishna consciousness after Lord Chaitanya had disappeared. Dhananjaya Pandit, we don't know too much right now, but we will also find more information on him. And we go to the final few days of the month. On the 14th is Uttana Akadasi. And that's also the disappearance day of Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. And on that day, we honor this great personality who was the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada, spiritual master Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati. Gaur Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj was a great personality. He was renunciation personified. Namo uh, Gauda Kishoraya Saksad Bhairagya. Murtaye, Vipralamba Asambode, Padambujayate Namaha. So we chant his pranam mantras and we worship Gorki Shordas Babaji Maharaj. Uh, a great soul who simply uh, was the force to bring Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati uh, into the process of initiation and then inspire him as one of the greatest preachers in the history of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And then we have the disappearance of Bhugarva Goswami and Kashivara Pandit. Uh, Kashivara Pandit was also a god brother of Lord Chaitanya, who was given the service after Lord Chaitanya's uh, spiritual master Ishwara Puri disappeared from the planet. Kashivara Pandit was instructed to come along with Govinda, another associate, another god brother of Lord Chaitanya, to come and assist Lord Chaitanya in his pastimes. Kashivara Pandit was Lord Chaitanya's bodyguard. And then you have Bhugarva Goswami, and he's also there. Ugarva Goswami in the Radha Gokulananda temple. You could find his Samadhi Mandir also. 
he is a, he was a great friend of Lokanath Das Goswami. They were like inseparable, and uh, he helped to establish the many temp that temple, Radhagokulananda, also. And then you have the last day, and that is um, the Purnima, uh, Krishna Rasa Yatra, that is Krishna dancing Rasa, Rasa Lila. This is the king of all the Rasa Leelas. Lord, uh, Lord Krishna has danced one during the uh, spring season and one during the fall season. The one in the fall season is considered to be the most auspicious. On that day, I remember when we were in the temple in Uvrindavan, we would cook all day sweets, only sweets. And we would make mountains and mountains of various kinds of burfis and sandesh and rubbery and condensed milk and koa, para and, you know, various types of sweet pastries everything sweet and then at midnight and we'd also make gallons and gallons of wonderful sweet rice with new Vrindavan milk and we would put it in the forest we would put all the the, the uh, sweet rice in the forest so Radha and Krishna when they were dancing along with their his associates if they felt any tiredness during the dance they could come and partake of the sweet rice. So we would do that every year. It was a wonderful ceremony, Krishna Rasa Yatra. And then the next morning, I remember it was, we would have breakfast and they would serve out all the sweets and you would get a plate with about 50 sweets on it. And you would think, Adivo. <laughs> and, and you'd go for it, you know. <laughs> Of course, sometimes a few people didn't make it, but it was like that. Anyway, that was the beauty of this particular festival of devotees we get all. And it's also the Vivaha of Tulsi and Shaligram, Tulsi Vivaha, along with Shaligram. And that's a beautiful pastime. How uh, Tulsi and Shaligram became married into one. Uh, Shalagram being Krishna himself manifested as a rock form of Tulsi, honoring her Lord by being placed at the, at, on the top of the head of the Shalagrams and all around the Shalagrams. So that's a beautiful festival. That's also that same day as the appearance of Nimbarka Acharya, one of the, the four Acharyas. We have Brahmanuja Acharya, we have uh, Madhvacharya. We have uh, Vishnu Swami and we have Nimbarka Charya. Nimbarka Charya is, is, is the Chatur Shushana uh, Sampradaya or the four Kumaras started by Nimbarka Charya. One of the four, it says that there are four bona fide Acharyas or four bona fide Sampradayas. And outside of these four bona fide sampradayas, you cannot find bhakti in its pure form. This is the only place. In other words, if you are performing bhakti, you have to perform it in either one of these four sampradayas. So we are the Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya sampradaya. We have an extra uh, title, and as Gaudiya refers to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who appeared in the Madhva, the Brahma Madhva Sampradaya. Like and then um, starting on the 14th and ending on the 18th is, is Bhishma Panchika. And that means for those four day, five days, the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th, it's recommended devotees perform a fast by eating only fruit on those five days. That's all you can consume on those five days is fruit. And that's Bhishma, Bhishma Panchika. Panchika means five. And that's the last day of Kartik, the 18th of November. Okay, so um, yeah, this is a little overview.
kind of a short overview of some of the events of this most amazing month. And of course, we every day in this month, we worship Damodar by establishing a form, as we see in front of us, the beautiful form of the soda tying up Krishna. So find a form like that, either in the form of a picture or a murti, place it on an altar in your home. Or if you can, every day go to the temple and worship the Lord as Damodar by offering nice ghee lamp. Uh, ghee lamp represents the love of the devotee in the form of that light. That light is the indication of the heart. The heart is giving light, is giving love. Love and light are synonymous. So the love of our life, the love of the light, the light of our love is being offered to Krishna in the form of that uh, ghee lamp. It's not simply some twisting of the, the arm just to get it over with. It's actually a, a way to worship the Lord in a very loving way. If we meditate on that light as being our love and being and offering that love to Krishna as we offer it in devotion, then we are performing Dhammadhar Lila. And then, of course, we should hear regularly uh, the pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan, especially his Dhammadhar Lila. Okay. So we'll stop there. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for so nice events in this glorious month and auspicious month of Karthik Damodar month. Uh, in UK, it's going to start from 21st. So tomorrow we are celebrating Sharad Purnima here and uh, Karthik Damodar month from 21st with uh, uh, this Krishna Ras. Uh, the Guru Maharaj, you mentioned you celebrate with sweets. You used to. I remember like that's the day for us in Diwali in India when mother used to cook lots of sweets. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the Krishna Ras day for many Indians. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Sweet, mem sweet memories. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or realizations, please uh, do. Uh, Unmute yourself now. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Raj. I crush, I Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to yourself, Maharaj. Um, Hare Krishna Raj, I, I would like to uh, go back to that super amazing pastime that you talked about in the beginning of the class when uh, the Lord Sri Krishna in his child form is being bound by Mother Yashoda and then he allows her to tie. And I've like two questions around that pastime. One in that it's difficult to conceive how a small child is like so frightened and yet overcome by love and saying, I'll help you to tie me. And at the same time, there's the the other part of it was Yashoda, Mother Yashoda is doing things with Krishna every day. She's like feeding him, she's bathing him, she's dressing him, she's picking him up and cuddling him, and so many things she does with him. Uh, yet with no trouble whatsoever, yet when she tries to punish him, then it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> like, it'd be wonderful if you could explain a bit behind what Krishna's feelings were and how could he could have two feelings at the same time and how that works in that Yashoda, Mother Yashoda can do all these things, but she can't punish him. 
<laughs> well, all I can say is that's Krishna. <laughs> that's his nature. He has, it says he has two distinct nature. One is called Madhurya, one is called Adarya. Adarya is his godlike nature. And Madhurya is his sweet, intimate, uh, apparently ordinary activities as a child who is naughty, as a uh, as a uh, friend who has other friends. In other words, the Vrindavan Leela is Madhurya or sweetness. It takes away all the, the mood of awe and reverence. And that is the most intimate and most complete form of worshiping Krishna. And so my mother Yasoda, she has that. Even if someone tells her that her child is God, she, she dismisses it. Even if, she, even if she sees it, she did when she opened his mouth looking for the dirt that Balaram said she swallowed, he swallowed. She saw anything in, her, in the mouth. She saw the whole universe with all the planets and galaxies. She saw herself looking into the mouth of Krishna. She saw everything in creation within his mouth. And she was thinking, am I bewildered? <laughs> and then at one point, she, her, somehow her mind said, mm, oh my, my son is God. And then as soon as she thought like that, Krishna took it away. And she was back in her mother-like mood again. So that's that's Rindavan. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Rindavan means intimacy, love. And, and our process of bhakti is to worship Krishna in the mood of awe and reverence. And the process purifies one as we go from stage to stage coming to the higher stages. When we get to the higher stages, then attraction to Krishna becomes natural. We call that spontaneous. On that stage, there, the intimacy is, starts to develop and the mood of awe and reverence is, start, is, is, is diminishing. But that is not something one can simply adopt. One has to go through the process and, and qualify themselves. But there's a way to accelerate that quali those qualifications, and that is by practicing Raghunuga Sadhana. And that's also explained nicely in Chaitanya Charitamrita, but in a very condensed form by His Holiness Shiva Ram Maharaj in a beautiful book called Spontaneous Devotional Service, where he nicely narrates all of the stages that one goes through and along with the sadhana that one should apply in order to reach those higher stages. But for now, we worship in our reverence and we keep that move. But that's not the goal. Goal is spontaneous attraction to Krishna because that's the nature of the soul. Soul is spontaneously attracted to Krishna, free from the mood of awe and reverence. But it's not imitatable. Thank you, Maharaj. Although the inconceivable is still wonderful to hear his sweet pastimes. Mm -hmm. And the, the principle of your question is Krishna is everything. So he can, he can change his moods accordingly. And he can adopt contrary moods at the same time. What is impossible for us is natural for God. I have a flower. 
I'll offer you a nice rose. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. Let's see. There you go. Beautiful rose. Out of all the flowers, the rose is the best. And out of all, this, all of the devotees, the spiritual master is the flower. Is the, is the rose. The spiritual master is the rose. Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Namrat. Namrata. Must be very late there. It's the... Uh... 9.30, yeah. 9.30, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, please accept my humble obeisance to you. Uh, all glory to Shri Prabhupada. All glory to you, Maharaj. I hope you are well. Well, by, the, by two things, the prayers of the devotees and by the mercy of, the special mercy of Lord Nishringadev, things are getting better. <laughs> okay. Yes, Maharaj, we all are praying for you. Yeah, that's my only medicine. What the doctors give me as medicine is just, just they're mostly it's just placebos. The real medicine is the devotees' prayers and the mercy of the Lord. Yes, Maharaj. We are happy to see you in good health again. Thank you. Uh, so Maharaj, I wanted to ask, um, you mentioned about uh, two last Leelas in the Kartik month. Uh, can you please elaborate on uh, the two, two last Leelas you were talking about? Yeah, the first one is called Sharadiya. And the second one is Krishna Rasa Yatra. Sharadiya. I'm not sure the actual meaning of the word. I have failed to do research on that. I think it's Sharad Purnima. Yeah, Krishna, Krishna danced many Rasa Leelas, but the, the king of all Rasa Leela dance is the one at the end of the Kartik month. That's the, that's the, main, the main one in the Sharad season. Charat means fall. I can't uh, clearly give you a distinction between the two. That's something I need to do some more research on. But you can look it up. See your Saradiya Rasi. You see the Saradiya Rasi Yatra, and then you see the Krishna Rasi Yatra. It's different. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very Hare much. Hare Krishna. Thank Hare you. Hare Krishna. So, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, we don't have any questions in chat. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, Please unmute yourself if you have any question. We are four minutes past five, Guru Maharaj. So. Okay, so we went past the time. Good. Well, we can stop here and we'll uh, continue tomorrow. I should be good for the whole week. And again, just a brief announcement. From tomorrow, we'll start narrating some of Krishna's leelas. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories Hare to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you, Srimati. Hope to see you soon, Guru Maharaj.
Oh, that's the plan. Man proposes, God disposes. <laughs> <laughs>